Okay, my name is Cortland Savage. I'm originally from Mount Holly, North Carolina. That's right out of Sar right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, my journey into aviation was a little different. I actually didn't think about or dream about being a pilot. I actually um, I joked about it. I um, I was in high school, about to graduate, looking at what I wanted to do in life. The year was 2008, and, and uh, one of my uh, black men was running for president. And I made a bet with my friend: if a black man becomes president, I'm gonna go fly a plane. Sure enough, President Barack Obama was elected. I did an introductory flight and I fell in love with aviation and it's pretty much off a joke. And I kind of pursued my career in aviation and, um, and you know, got my pilot's license at the age of 17. I actually enlisted in the Air Force as a crew chief on a C-17 in Joint Base Charleston, South Carolina. And I then, um, uh, I went to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University on the, at the Air Force Base the satellite campus, got my bachelor's of science in aeronautics, then started applying to be a pilot. I tried the Air Force, I tried uh, the Air National Guard, um, and then I eventually ended up trying the Navy and I got picked up, went to officer candidate school, um, where I went through and uh, went through fine, everything went great, did pretty well, was able to select tail hook, which is eventually the any aircraft with the hook on the back that lands on the aircraft carrier. I then was able to uh, fly the F-18. And then while flying the F-18, I noticed I was one of the two black uh, pilots flying the F-18. So I kind of wanted to make a change. So when I got out I um, and went to the airlines, I decided to create a nonprofit organization called Fly for the Culture to promote diversity and inclusion in the aviation industry. And basically what I do is utilize social media, uh, mainly Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, all of them. We have everything you can think of. And basically I wanted to reach the young people where they are and that's pretty much social media. Being young myself at 29, I knew that if I just keep constantly posting content on social media to gain attention and basically that content was other aviators of uh, color and women flying and then also uh, myself taking young people up on introductory flights, the same flight I went up on when I was 17 years old and fell in love with aviation. I then, um, so doing so at Fly for the Culture, we take kids on introductory flights. I do. Uh, different events. Uh, before COVID, I would do events with like American Airlines or Lucas Films in uh, San, uh, San Francisco. And um, also, we have some good news. We got an airplane donated to our organization. So now I'll be able to offer flight training with the aircraft, be able to uh, travel up and down the East Coast because, you know, it's a little Piper Cherokee, so I'm not flying all the way out to the West Coast. It's take about a couple of days, like a day. But uh, I will fly up and down the East Coast and do different events and, and also offer flight training and also in the works working with another flight school as well of starting another location. I mean, uh, our first location, kind of where we can offer uh, more classroom style flight training and uh, maintenance training as well. So that's kind of what we're doing, what I do with Fly for Coach and some updates of some new things we have going on as well. So what inspired you to pursue aviation? um well you know going back from the beginning i i was kind of really well actually what inspired it and kind of even made me make that such a joke about if a black man becomes president i'll go fly a plane is because it was put in the back of my head like aviation in some some way because my dad used to bank at the credit union which is actually the old charlotte douglas airport so when I would go with him to the bank, I would see the cargo aircraft, it was the cargo side of the uh, airport, the DHL, UPS, FedEx airplanes. And I was always fascinated by how big they were. And I, as a kid, I remember telling myself, I just wanna go on, go be able to go inside one of those aircraft and see what it looks like. And I didn't even think about flying it, but I think from that, it was kind of in my head of uh, like, hey, maybe you like airplanes, but I just never seen anyone look like me fly it. So. Or so I didn't think it was possible, but I think that's kind of what struck my interest in aviation is just going with my father to the credit union. You were a C-17 crew chief, is that correct? Yes. yes so right. were you excited to find out you'd be working on C-17s? Um, well, I initially was working on C-17s. I was excited to figure out I would be go going to be an officer in, uh, in the Navy. Uh, you know, because one of my goals was to be an officer. I just wanted to be an officer. As you know, we're officer first, pilot second. So I was just decided to be an officer and and, and, uh, and then, you know, get to fly. So, yeah, I was really, it was like a, 
three or four months after I applied with the Navy, you know, uh, actually I was working. I was actually on the line working on the C-17. Someone came out and told me uh, the good news. So it was, it was an amazing uh, feeling. Um, so why the Air Force? And then was the Navy because you got selected to be an officer or was there something particular about the Navy? Um, initially, why the Air Force? Because it just kind of fit what I was trying to do. And, you know, I knew I wanted to be an airline pilot eventually. I just didn't really know the different pathways at the time to get there. So I kind of created my own. And I knew the Air Force had planes and I just wanted to do something with planes because I knew initially I wouldn't be able to, you know, go to pilot training because, well, I could have, well, you know, because I had to get my bachelor's degree. But I just want to do something aviation related. So that's what led me to the Air Force. What led me to the Navy was I applied to the Air Force, Air National Guard, Air Force Reserves. And I just never got a good, I never got a yes. So someone said, hey, try the Navy. And I just tried it. And they say, yeah. So I went over there. <laughs> and who inspires you? Um, I would have to say uh, an individual I met through Fly for the Culture almost just about a year ago, matter of fact. His name is Daryl Freeman. He's a very successful entrepreneur in Nashville, Tennessee. And it was just inspiring because he is, it, as a Black person, we don't really see other Black people that have wealth, like money. Uh, so to see a Black man be able to fly his own non-passenger plane to my airport just to pick me up to go see one of his many properties, it, it changed my life and it would kind of struck this entrepreneur spirit inside of me. And I also recently just found it a new company, um, s and Aviation Staffing Agency, where we look to hire, inspire, motivate, cultivate. And that came from him because it kind of just made me want to create my own business and kind of take fly for the culture a little farther. So now I'll be able to kind of help these young people who are interested in aviation get at least in the aviation environment. And, to, and then they can work themselves up to they become a pilot, kind of like I did myself. So, yep, Daryl Freeman is who I look up to. <laughs> That's awesome. If you could give a message to people looking into Fly for the Culture or the people going to be logging in for Women's of Aviation, our target audience is a women and young people from the ages of 7 to 22. What would be your message to them? I definitely, uh, so my message to them was don't let the fact that you are a woman or anything discourage you in any type of way. I actually use that, or like the fact that I'm a minority, I use that to motivate me because I feel I have to be twice as good to be average. So that feeling makes you work harder because you're no, you, you don't look like everyone else here because you're one of the, like, I think women airline pilots are like 4%. And that's what we're aiming to change and look around. You see that there's not a lot of people that look like you in it and work hard to not just, you know, through training and, and everything, but just work hard to inspire the next generation of individuals like women and minorities and young people to pursue a career in aviation. Now, don't just, you know, go through training and just think about yourself because you made it. When you make it, give back. And because it's easier for a woman to talk to a young lady than it is for me to talk to a young lady. That actually leads into my next question. What challenge are you most proud of overcoming? Um, creating a business. Like I literally created a business. I had no idea what I was doing when I, I don't have a degree. In, my degree is in aeronautics. I don't have a degree in business. And I literally had no idea what a nonprofit did or anything. I didn't even know. I didn't know nothing. So the fact that I just logged on, I literally the same way I became a military pilot, the same way I created a for the culture. Google. I just went on Google and I just Googled it and did a lot of research and I was able to incorporate um, the nonprofit and also make it tax exempt with being the only person uh, a part of the business but not even having a board quite yet. So I'm definitely proud of just being able to teach myself business and how to start one. And I think my final question would be what advice would you give to someone who is considering aviation as a career since you have had so many successes and know what you know now well i had i'm talking about all the successes but i don't talk about all the failures i failed a lot but what i realized is and i would tell someone else this is 
there's no such thing as failure. Failure only exists if you give up. And what happens is when you when you feel like you failed or you didn't pass this test or you didn't pass this uh, check ride, you didn't fail. You just it's a lesson. You just got taught a lesson. So now you can go back, go home, get in the books and study and figure out what you need to do better next time so you can be better. And it actually improves you. So there's no such thing as failure. There's only it's just a minor setback. Uh, the only time you fail is when you give up. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I personally really enjoyed learning about you and talking to you today and you're very inspiring. And I hope that our interview will reach a lot of young women out there and just young individuals looking into aviation. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Have a good morning. All right, now you too, bye-bye. <laughs>